flight test. I'm Josh, this is Josh. Hi. And Josh, what is one thing that we use a lot of? Cameras. In yeah, in the air. I got the clue because there's one sitting right here. That's right. What we're talking about is the vehicle that you use to get the camera the up in the air. aerial vehicle. Right. A lot of people uh, are going the way of the multi-rotors. It seems to be the more popular trend. But there are still some out there that like to use the uh, traditional helicopter. Going old school. Yeah. Go, going back to how it used to start. And we're always looking for ways to get bigger, better cameras on the planes. Because yeah. sometimes GoPro just won't cut it. Our friend Eric decided to put a 5D on his T-Rex 800. It used to be a 700, but then he made it. Guy's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like this. Basically, this is to scale. You want your... You know, optimal video with your uh, with your helicopter. With your hovering platform? Single rotor. This is how have you want to do it. Have tried this This is what yet? Eric says anyway. And we tried it out in the summer. Uh, and so watch this video. Check it out. I did uh, a couple of hovers in my yard at home. But it's such a big helicopter, I just don't want to take a chance of trying to fly it around the yard. Right. So I just brought it here so that, what's that? The cap takes me. Yeah, no doubt. So I just figured I'd bring it along after flight test today and just try to see what it would do with some more space. And All right. I'm testing the Canon 5D on there, so I want to see if it's going to shake around or yes. not. So. so you have a lot of uh, money wrapped up into this. Yeah, it's actually a little intimidating. Eric is, uh, he's he shoots the camera. So he works on the show. Yeah, he's a cameraman. Um, basically what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna plug in the onboard battery. Yeah. It's got a separate battery to power the receiver and the gyro and all that stuff. So um, if you watch the tail rotor back there, I have my transmitter powered on and now it'll initialize the gyro. Yes. Um, and then from there, now that the gyro is initialized, we're gonna put it in throttle hold. And basically what that does is it just kills the motor so that I can plug in the batteries in order to be safe right. sitting in the radius of this thing. Yes. I don't know that I'd want to get hit by these. I don't either. So um, these are, if I remember correctly, the box on them said these are an 820 millimeter carbon blade. So I could do some damage, I think. Take off here. Yeah, so we're in throttle hold. Um, camera's rolling and that's what we're flying today just to test that. So we're gonna go ahead and initialize. It's popping a little, yeah. Alright, and now we're gonna go ahead and stand back. These bigger machines um, are, are extremely stable, so I'm really happy with the fact that this thing flies so nice. It's yeah. it's really kind of a kitten, to be real honest. It doesn't fly like I've flown 450 helicopters and stuff, and done some mild aerobatics with them, and they're really pitchy and quick. Do you ever uh, fly FPV when you're doing this, or you use line of sight? Um, I fly line of sight because this is going to be a two-man operation. Um, the camera will actually have another guy running it with another transmitter. Um, and so he'll watch an FPV monitor while I'm flying line of sight. So I'll kind of get him around the, uh, the general area. helicopter gets down into ground effect, especially one with that size of a rotor, it's going to kind of float when you get towards the ground, so you just got to kind of sit it in nice and soft. Nice. And then slowly pull the collective and the throttle mix down, and then we'll go into to hold, which is going to lock the motor from coming back on. Right. So, once you're We're in... alive! <laughs> you look the footage? Yeah, I do. I'm uh, pretty excited about right. this, actually. So. So, 
here we go. That looks pretty stable there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, it does. But when I did hovering tests at home, I got this far, so I'm anxious to see what it does once it starts yeah. moving forward. Yeah, see, there's a little bit just as it starts to move Is that forward. from like crosswind though? When a helicopter moves from hovering into forward flight, sometimes they'll shudder a little bit. Oh, okay. I believe the term is translational lift. So I don't know if I can tighten the shock things that look like from remote control cars on there. Yeah. If I can maybe tighten those up and I might get rid of it some. Gotcha. So far that looks pretty yes. good. I'm pretty happy with that, honestly. And that looked like a much warmer time of the year. Well, that's a good reason. It's back in the summer. Yeah, we're all happy to have that back. Anyway, we got Eric with us here now. Yes. How you doing? And uh, Eric, you actually uh, made some adjustments to that setup because we did have a little bit of shakiness to the video, but you, uh, you sure. made some yeah. improvements to that well, as well, right? And first of all, it's been what six months since that video was shot. Yeah. Are you still flying it? Yeah. As a matter of fact, we are. Um, we made some adjustments to the camera boom. Uh, it has oil-filled shocks, I believe, that are off of like a monster truck. Okay. And so we were able to dial those in a little bit better and actually get rid of some of that shaking. Nice. So. Nice. Um, we're flying it today for doing a lot of, so of our professional work, being that it can lift uh, a bigger camera. Yeah, that's right, because Eric does a lot of, you do uh, wedding photography and you mm -hmm. do all kinds of different videography, sure. and so he uses that format for it, and you feel like it works better. Yeah. I do. Um, the single rotor helicopter, I actually started off in multi-rotor, yeah. so that was my first uh, uh, platform to carry up a camera and you know started with the GoPro like a lot of people do and uh, just started wanting to put bigger cameras in yeah. there and cool. just because of what they can film uh, the resolution of the camera yeah. and that sort of thing as you said a GoPro. Sometimes. But Josh is a multi-rotor guy. Yeah. He thinks that's better. I think multi-rotor is definitely better. Okay. I think that you guys should fight. <clears throat> yeah I'm hardcore multi-rotor. Um, I think it's better and actually you carry this now with a is it a hexacopter? Yeah um, I have a hexacopter that I can pick up a 60D. I have flown the 5D on it, um, it makes it work a little hard. Okay. okay. Um, so I think the T-Rex does a lot better of a job picking up the larger cameras. Okay. So I think that's yeah. where the one of the and pros of a, of a single rotor. And your application is a little bit different because you actually, you can't fly that FPV. Where multi-rotors, you can fly FPV. Sure. I think it, I think it would be really difficult. Yeah. Um, pretty risky too. I think, yeah. The danger factor yeah. is probably a lot more. And, and what's the size? You said it in the video. Eight, it's an 820 millimeter blade. That was actually a T-Rex 700. Okay. Um, and we stretched it out with a longer tail boom and longer blades. So you definitely wouldn't want to be hitting anything or anybody no. with that thing. No, so. definitely not. So we fly that as a two-man operation. Um, okay. One guy controls the, the camera on a gimbal okay and then I fly line of sight on the helicopter. So you need more people to fly it. Sure. Um, obviously and, and there's a lot more maintenance involved too. Uh, definitely. So what do you think are what, what's better about a well, multi rotor? I, I think with multi rotors first thing is is with multi rotors especially when you get to the hexacopters if you lose one motor you have other motors that can, can mm -hmm. override it. Now I know with the tricopters and the and the quads you can't sure. do that. I, I got it here. Yeah. We can do an auto rotation on a single okay. rotor helicopter so pull throttle hold and we can coast them right in. Nice. So nice. I think that, you know. Do I you think have any uh, auto stabilization or anything like uh, that? They actually do now. They've okay. taken um, the fly bars off of a lot of the systems. I still have the fly bars on my copter because it's working. Okay. Um, but in the future, we are going to go to a fly barless rotor head. And just to plug one company, I know DJI has a system that you can nope. fold GPS and auto stabilization nice. just like a multi rotor. Well, that would give you a little bit more safety too because, like we were talking about FPV. Sure. Um, I saw in your videos, there's no way you could ever go behind something or around something. Yeah. Where where line of sight would be temporarily broken. Sure. Um, and also, I gotta imagine holding position, um, since you can't fly line of sight, would be very difficult. Yeah. You got yeah. a lot of communication. I think you have me there. Uh, I think my favorite but, things about the single rotor T-Rex over okay. over multi rotor is just the ability to lift really heavy cameras. Okay. The ability to steer the camera separate from flying. Like when I'm flying that thing, it's nice to be able to concentrate fully on just my target and where the copter is in the air, and allow the other person to do the fine tuning nice. um, as far as framing. So that is kind of a plus. Um, I mean, obviously everything has yeah. pros and cons. The yeah. negatives are that the batteries are extremely expensive. We have to fly two six cells in a series just to get that thing off so the ground cells. for about seven minutes. So seven minute flight time. It's not nearly your, as efficient. Your cost is pretty high too. Yeah, so cost is, is a thing. And then as you brought up maintenance, um, there's yes. a lot of maintenance with a single rotor over a multi. Well, very cool. Yeah, and I'm, I'm gonna stick with multi rotors. One thing I gotta say is the production value, as you call it, sure. definitely takes the cake on that. Yeah. When you see that thing out there, it's intimidating and, yeah. and inspiring at the same time. Sure. Um, I do like the multi-rotors because if you're you know a small company one-man crew and stuff you can do 
things solely by yourself. And you do have features that are easier to incorporate, such as the auto stabilization sure. and everything. We fly a lot of multi-rotors in our productions as well. Yeah. Um, it, the T-Rex definitely doesn't go up all the time. Yeah. Um, we do a lot of indoor aerial video as well. Oh, nice. And, and so the T-Rex is probably not the machine for that. So Very we cool. do fly a quad or a hexacopter for that. I guess so. everything has its application. It and, does, And I think for, sure. for what you've done, it's definitely found its niche because I've seen some of your videos and they're amazing. Well, thank so. you. I appreciate Beautiful. it. Beautiful. So it depends on what you need it for. Basically, it's what it comes down to. Since we don't have a real winner, we're actually going to go outside and these guys are going to have a fist fight, um, which is going to be pretty cool to watch. Don't know if we're going to air it, though. But thank you guys for watching. <laughs> Thanks, Stone Cap Productions, for sponsoring this episode. And check out the website, playtest.com. Raise some articles. Go to the forum. Lots of helpful people on there. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. See you next time. Are you guys ready? Yep. Let's go. All right, let's go fight.